Thank you. Um, so I'm Jouni, um, the head designer and CEO of Kellu, and we are really an airship company. Um, I'm going to briefly tell you about what is our main business, and um, after that, uh, more about um, the platform, what it can do for forestry as well. So our main business is uh, energy. We are operating over the woods. So power lines, gas lines are everywhere. Just in Finland there are about 400,000 kilometers of power lines and a problem anywhere will show to all of us or at least some of us and it's very expensive. So the Power companies do everything in their power to prevent the problems. And now they fly helicopters. They've tried, tried also flying drones. They fly maybe 20 to 40 minutes. It doesn't really help. So the good, good old-fashioned ground crew is the third option. The one thing in common with all of these is that they are very, very expensive meaning lots of money spent. And this is what we are changing. So instead of flying helicopters that fly only a few hours, our prototypes fly almost for a week. They are um, remotely controlled or AI controlled so we basically satellite navigate them. They are relatively fast, up to highway speeds of cars. And uh, well, they are of course spooky looking as well. Um, and the brief history of, the, so that much about uh, our main business, the electric uh, and the energy sector. Uh, the main idea is that they can fly for a very long time because they are lighter than air. They float in the air. Any other form of um, flight requires that you spend huge amounts of energy. And airships are not a new invention. They've been around for about 120, 130 years in practical forms. And one thing in common is that they have been always huge. They've been designed to carry people, guns, even tanks. And so far they haven't been very successful. If you have something that is 200-300 meters long, it's expensive, not very practical. So we are doing everything in contrary with the traditional way making it as small as possible. And as a result, we have a very good intelligence gathering and monitoring platform. It can basically stay up forever as a system. We are not thinking about just a single airship, but dozens, hundreds of them, they can move, they can reach the targets very fast. So it means that um, the price of uh, real-time information or any aerial information will be significantly dropped. Just the very cheapest helicopter in Finland, the cheapest one you can buy, is 700,000. It's, you know, one of the tiny two-seater helicopters. We don't come even as close as a fraction of that, that kind of price. And um, we don't sell the airships, but we sell information. We have our first contract. We are developing uh, the system to the final stages of commercial level right now. And we are selling virtual helicopter front seat. It's the real-time video feed 
from somewhere out there. So you don't need to be the president of the United States to be able to get a live feed from some place remotely far away. And you can actually get it started faster without an advance notice. They need to position the satellites right now. Later on, we will move on the status reports. Uh, we are working um, on the first steps of um, getting right partners to process process the sensor information, make uh, sense with it with uh, AI. Okay, we have done lots of things, and um, how can I check the videos? I'll show you a few things in practice. So here you will see an example of it. Do we have a sound? Good. Yes, we do. So it's very silent. This was an example of a low, um, our test flight program. I'll just take it again so you get an idea. So we are flying about 20 to 30 kilometers per hour. Good. That's how, how silent it, it is actually. Um, the other clip is, um, is something that presents the um, capabilities of the platform. So that's that's about it. In the later uh, film, we flew about 50 to 60 kilometers per hour to, through the S turns. But any questions? Thank you, Yoni. <laughs> Who will start? Okay. So I. in the air because it's uh, quite uh, light and uh, wind can disturb or take it away yes we can we can operate um, at the moment up to wind uh, speeds uh, just above 10 meters per second so that's approximately the level that um, smallest helicopters operate uh, it's very likely that um, the limit will increase later but we are at very very early stage right now, so we don't take risks with with wind. Uh, that particular prototype carries three kilo, uh, kilograms of payload for a week. Over, depending on the speed, up to five to seven thousand kilometers. Uh, thank you, Jouni. Juuso Uusimäki. Um, what sort of sensors are you using at the moment and what do you think you can use to get data? At the moment we use just uh, the regular drone stuff. Um, we can basically put anything um, that fit it, fits within the um, payload capacity there. Plus, we have uh, plenty of onboard electricity available. We are actually running uh, hydrogen fuel cells, so the peak capacity on the 
sensors can be up to six to eight hundred watts if needed not not permanently because we need it uh, mostly for propulsion so one, one more question so have you considered using solar cells for charging the batteries also or is it possible uh, we have considered it um, um, Actually, now we have a much um, more efficient solution with um, using the very same gas hydrogen also for energy that we use for lifting gas. Solar, uh, solar planets are actually very heavy considering their power, even though they are relatively lightweight now. Okay, this is coming from a guy, I think, who watches too many uh, amateur drone videos on the internet. But uh, uh, what about attack by hawks and kites and birds? Um, or somebody shooting it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, basically, it uh, will result in a gradual loss of pressure. So within a couple of hours, we need to take it down. In the Worst possible uh, disaster. So, if somebody comes up and slices the whole craft open, it means that it won't fly any any longer. But it acts as um, a badly designed parachute. So it doesn't most likely kill anybody, but gradually lands. Any other questions? Matti from Senop. So, how about those regulations? I think next year the drones flying mm -hmm. regulations are tightening up. So, how how is it applied in in these kind of vehicles? Actually, the regulations as whole are relaxed a bit. Will be. Um, so, we operate under the very same regulations that everybody else using using drones. Uh, so, means it means that the, when we operate over our customer power grid. So we don't have line of sight. We don't see the, um, the airship. Uh, we have to activate our airspace reservation. It means that then, um, the rule of thumb everywhere in the world is that all unmanned air aircraft have to give way for any heavier traffic. And once we have um, reserved a certain airspace, uh, the rules reverse. Everybody else has to yield to us. So that kind of airspace activation is in, in space in Finland and in Scandinavia. Or airspace reservation, and we just have to reserve, uh, reserve certain airspaces and then tell when we are using the reserved areas. <laughs> 